Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to call to order the meeting of the State Allocation Board. Um, Secretary, will you please call the roll? Senator Allen. Senator Wynn. Senator Pan. Assemblymember Nazarian. Present. Assemblymember Chavez. Here. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Here. Tom Torlickson. Here. Cesar Diaz. Here. Jeffrey McGuire. Here. Jocelyn Wong Hernandez. Here. And we have a quorum. Thank you. So um, we have something special planned this afternoon. Before we start our agenda items, we'd like to take a moment to thank two members for their service to the board um, who will be coming off of the board. And we have some resolutions. So if everyone would uh, indulge me for a few minutes, I'd like to start by presenting um, a resolution to Assembly Member Rocky Chavez. Great, whoever, whoever wants to hold it. Um, so I wanted to thank Assemblymember Chavez for, um, for his dedication and service to the State Allocation Board. Assemblymember Chavez has served on the SAB since January 2015 and has assisted the board in making apportionments and unfunded approvals for over $2.9 billion worth of projects for the school facility program and other programs administered by this board. His broad understanding and awareness of the conditions confronting the state of California, especially in the area of school facility, facilities on military bases, has enabled him to work closely with OPSC to address the plight of these facilities, which has resulted in an effective collaboration producing the funds for these schools within the framework of the SFP. We thank him for his commitment, dedication, and conscientious service to this board, as well as to the people of the state of California. Well, thank you. And thank you. Uh -huh. So, um, Assembly Member Chavez, if you'd like to say anything, or if any of the board members would like to say anything, I would welcome anyone's comments. Please, Mr. O'Donnell. I'll just say that at the end. Oh, okay. I, I'll just note that Dr. Pan and Cesar Diaz, you can't read their signatures. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Thank you. Did you, when you say, sorry, when you said at the end, did you mean now for this, at the end of, okay. We'll move on then to the next uh, resolution and I'd like to present that to Superintendent Tom Torlikson. All right. We'd like to um, acknowledge Superintendent Tom Torlikson's dedication and service to the State Allocation Board he has been a member of the SAB since being elected Superintendent of Public Instruction. He was also a member of the board in 2003 when he was a member of the State Senate and in 2009 when he was a member of the State Assembly. As Superintendent, he has assisted the board in making apportionments and unfunded approvals for more than 1,900 projects, totaling $6.435 billion um, under the school facility program and other programs administered by this board. We thank him for his commitment to the success of this board and the betterment of California's public schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you had a couple of comments to make. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Board, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for all the hard work, the great, talented, passionate, skilled work that you do. Uh, thank you, Juan and Nick. Schweitzer, Juan Morellis, and for standing in for me, sitting in for me on many, many good meetings, uh, and just admire the work that you're doing, the teamwork. Of course, I had to have a few reflections as we mark this uh, occasion for myself and my good colleague, uh, Chavez, Assemblymember Chavez. We've worked together on many topics, and thank you for your contributions, and always trying to find where win-win is, and looking to how to have the parties come together, because it's all about kids, and that this board does that on a regular basis, that's your mission, and, and you, you believe it and you f fulfill that mission. So yes, it's been an honor. I wanna just make a couple of reflections or uh, thoughts remembering the good times and the times that are in front of us. I just appreciate that this team, the team of the staff of the board and the OPSC and innovators, doers, uh, team dedicated to making sure all of our students and our teachers have up-to-date, modern, useful classrooms. They, they serve 21st century 
students and goals, and the facilities should be those same high quality. As a science teacher, I knew firsthand how important it was for great learning, to have a great learning environment. And I was proud to be the co-author in the legislature of Senate Bill 50 and uh, ultimately the key architect of Senate Bill 50 and the beginning of the state bond program back in 1998. It was about 9.2 billion or something to that, close to that at that point for, K for higher ed and K-12. It was about uh, 6 billion for just uh, K-12. So we had a, a, a crisis. There was, like we've been out of money before, we were out of money at that time. Pete Wilson uh, proposed a couple of small bonds, about two billion each, that would have been a series over three years, but couldn't get anybody uh, in, in the Republican caucus at that time to support it without some consideration of reforms. So I just want to give a little background, which will end with a funny uh, story about a famous restaurant in Sacramento. But um, we, we were struggling with this, and one evening, the um, all afternoon and evening up to midnight, uh, Antonio Villaraigosa was speaker at the time and called in dozens of members to talk to them one-to-one, -one, can you support a bond? And, you know, follow the governor's lead and let's get a bond. Well, um, that didn't happen, and so there was a lot of frustration. But as chair of housing, Antonio said, go find a way to get the home builders, the school folks, and our um, home builders and CBIA and uh, building trades to work together. So we worked uh, on a Thursday afternoon. We worked all day Friday, around the clock till midnight Saturday. And finally, Sunday about midnight, we struck a deal and had a strong cross-section of support and also a strong opposition from several quarters. But what fueled the final uh, victory for the public and for our kids was uh, Bob Hertzberg was, was also assigned by the speaker to work with me, and he likes to make sure that everybody has a good meal. So the last night, we thought we could get done by midnight, he ordered Frank Fats food. And it was a banana cream pie that sealed the deal. So if any of you know the banana cream pie, so I just want to say that was a good bit of history and it shows what teamwork can do when you bring everybody together. We do have an uh, extremely um, old housing, uh, old school building stock. Uh, we want to make sure that the, we have all the reforms we're doing on policy that we also have a good learning environment for our, our students. And we know, you know, you've been leading research shows that good, clean, modern school facilities with good lighting, safe environments are critical for student success. And so um, we look forward to working with you as you uh, continue fighting for more facilities. Uh, we're blessed that the voters are seeing the need to invest and say yes to invest. We had obviously the great victory of uh, $9 billion in Prop 51. And even more significant in my mind was 165 measures went to the ballot by local school districts, putting them to the ballot, forming bipartisan, nonpartisan coalitions with business, with educators, and passed 95% of those measures. That's about $15 billion of additional investment in our school facilities. So I just say uh, we know there's a lot more to be done. There was a national report, the state of our schools, which said over the next 10 years, the California subset of that need is about 190 billion. So we, we know we need more capacity for the growing parts of California. And we know we have a major challenge in dealing with aging buildings and infrastructure on our school campuses. So I just say, uh, Continue to work hard, teamwork, aim high, dream big. I, I say, why not think big and go for a $17 billion bond and not have to go to back to the voters every couple of years, but let's go big and have a good campaign and set it up for the next uh, 10 years. So with that, I say keep up the great work and thank you for the honor. And I really appreciate the staff's help, advice over the years. And again, Juan and uh, Nick were very helpful to me. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair? Please. Do you mind if we all take a photo? Of course, uh, absolutely. Flags, possibly. Oh, let's, let's do, can we do comments and then we'll do kind of a photo sure. at the end? Sure. Okay, great. Assembly Member Rodal? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just want to thank uh, these two fine men. It's been an honor working with you. Um, you know, Rocky, you've been great to work with. Uh, you come from the other side of the aisle, but you have an open mind and you know, uh, that this is really about serving kids. 
uh, you know, to the superintendent, you're the father of the modern, modern day school facilities program. And I very much appreciate that and all you've brought to the table over the years to serve California's children. Because this, 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 this isn't about facilities, this is about serving our children. And you can always tell what, you know, how important uh, education is when you look at a facility. And I can tell you when I walk into a school, you know, uh, that, I, that I, over the years when I walk into a school facility, I always look and see how clean is it? Is there any markings? How modern is it? Because that really speaks to how, how important we think education is and that's how our, so too will our students think how important education is. So I just want to thank you for your service and you've done well. You've done well, thank you. Unless anyone else ha oh yes, Senator Pan, of course. <coughs> well, th thank you very much. Um, I too want to thank and uh, express my appreciation uh, for both uh, our state superintendent, uh, and also uh, uh, Senator Chavez as well. Um, you know, I actually I think I inherited your office when you went off to be in the assembly. I remember when I moved in, and I saw <laughs> your office, and uh, you know, and, and really appreciate that during my time in the legislature that to have you as our uh, superintendent of public instruction, the work that uh, we've been able to do together. Uh, in uh, trying to improve the health of children as well as, of course, their education. They go hand in hand and, uh, and, and really appreciate your leadership there. And uh, Senator Chavez, I know that uh, when I first came to the legislature, uh, uh, you were a, a, a champion for uh, our, our veterans. I was actually hoping you'd become Secretary of Veterans Affairs at the time uh, as vice chair. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, since you've come to the legislature, I appreciate your uh, leadership in education and uh, again privileged to serve with you on on, on this board and uh, as well in the legislature and so we're going to miss having you around uh, uh, but i'm sure you'll you, you'll come by and tell us your uh, share with us your mind and we, we look forward to hearing from you so thank you thank you all we are going to try and figure out somewhere to take a picture how do how do we do this all right assembly members you spent more time in this room where do you want to stand Thank you all. Um, before we move on to the agenda items, I just wanted to note for the public that appeal item under tab six has been withdrawn from this agenda. Um, so we will move on to the minutes. Um, the minutes are ready for your approval. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to review. Would it entertain a motion? Motion of approval. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Um, any public comment on the minutes? All right, seeing none, let's do a roll call. Senator Pan. Here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Assemblymember Nazarian. Aye. Assemblymember Chavez. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Tom Torlickson. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to the executive officer's report. Yeah, we only have a few items tonight. So we wanted to share with the board that, hey, it's a 
great news tonight about a priority apportionment. So there was a bond sale that closed last week, and we have over $443 million um, as part of the consent agenda tonight. So that's over 227 projects um, that's slated for your approval, and that represents over 105 school districts. So those districts have until January 22nd to perfect and provide us the proper documentation um, in order to access the program cash. So again, that's great news for the program. Um, and the second item we wanted to share with the board is we have upcoming uh, priority, priority funding certification round that's coming up. So any district that has a unfunded approval and also have an unfunded approval um, that's also part of the consent agenda tonight. They have the ability to provide us a certification and that opens up in November, November 14th to be exact, and that closes December 13th. So if they submit us a certification, that certification is valid from January 1st to June 30th of 2019. So we're gonna be contacting those folks to encourage them to submit a certification. Absence of submitting a certification, um, they will actually have the two, two strikes provisions uh, apply to them. So again, we're gonna be encouraging those districts to submit the certification. And then we're also excited about the full day kindergarten um, program that's um, also gonna be part of the program agenda. So uh, we're looking forward to that full day imp kindergarten implementation. So the regulations are slated for your approval tonight. And so we had three stakeholder meetings and so look forward to bringing $100 million and activating two fun funding cycles. And then the last um, item on the agenda is actually uh, the next board meeting is uh, December 11th. And I also wanted to share with the board um, the acknowledge list um, kicked in. And so that's part of the information item. So the new construction projects, as we shared at the last meeting, um, we tapped into that uh, new acknowledge list. So that is on page 451 in the information section. And with that, um, we actually have a workshop tomorrow on the K-12 audit instructions in Fresno County Office of Education. And so we look forward to seeing a lot of folks um, out there uh, giving some instructions about the performance audit requirements of the new program. Thank you. Any questions or comments from board members? Um, is there any public um, comment on this informational item? Seeing none, we'll move on to tab four, which is the consent agenda. So the consent agenda is available for your approval, but uh, we did want to highlight that we have one item, um, one noted change. Uh, we're asking the board, uh, as a result of a school district, is asking that on page 241, um, that application number is 596473300. Dash 0029, that's Dorsey High School Career Tech Education Project, um, their modernization project, and that's for Los Angeles Unified. Um, they're asking that item be withdrawn um, from the consent agenda tonight. So absent of that, the consent agenda is, agenda is ready for your approval. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any public comment on the consent items? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr. O'Donnell. It, just a question. So are all the applicants getting the same grant level? On the, for the priority funding? Yes. So we actually clarified that. So all the uh, items in the bond sale, with the exception of three um, items, most of the items are actually getting a 2018 grant adjustments. So those items that were approved by the board um, as a result of the projects that moved forward on the workload list. Um, so those items are getting a 2018 adjustments. Okay, thank you. With the exception of three. Who motioned and seconded that last one? They weren't on the microphone. I thought Sen Senator Pan motioned and I didn't hear the second. Somebody from this area. Okay, thank you. Senator Pan? Aye. Assembly member Nazarian? Aye. Assemblymember Chavez. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Tom Torlickson. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to tab five, the status of fund releases. So on page, uh, actually on page 298, we have no uh, fund releases to report out to the board on the status of fund releases. We did want to share on the status of funds, um, as we reported tonight, that we had over 227 items as part of the consent agenda for priority of funding. Uh, we actually had seven items coming back as far as uh, 
fund recoveries to the program. That's part of the consent agenda tonight. And 13 approvals for over $52 million is also part of the consent agenda tonight. Um, so that's all we have to report in the financials today. Any public comment on the financials? Seeing none, we'll move to tab seven, um, the full day kindergarten proposed regs. So on tab seven, beginning with stamp page 333, we have the documents for the implementation of the full day kindergarten facilities grant program. And this program comes out of the uh, Unbus Education Trailer Bill and was approved in June of 2018. We have for your consideration today the regulations, forms, and grant agreement for the program, and those are included as attachments B through F of this item. And these documents outline the process for establishing eligibility and receiving funding under this program. In developing these documents, we've engaged in three stakeholder meetings to get feedback from school districts and other stakeholders, and we'd like to express our appreciation uh, to those who attended for their comments and for their participation, we did find it very helpful and were able to incorporate the feedback into this, the program. Um, we had over 200 viewers for our most recent stakeholder meeting, so that's great that we have folks that are watching and commenting, so thank you. Uh, we also, with this item, we do request one additional approval from the board. The funding for the program is $100 million with Two and a half million reserved for administration costs, and that leaves us with a balance of 97.5 million. And in establishing the funding rounds, we've outlined two funding rounds, one beginning in January of 2019 and one beginning in May of 2019. And we are recommending that the first funding round be for 37.5 million, and that the second round be for 60 million plus anything that was left over from the first round. And the reason for doing that is to make sure that folks have adequate notice of the program and time to prepare the applications. Um, so we wanted to load a little more funding on that second funding round. So that is part of the staff recommendation tonight. And uh, I'd be happy to address any detailed questions about the program, uh, but staff does recommend approval of the recommendations listed on page 338 of the agenda. If the board approves today, we will be able to file these regulations on an emergency basis with the Office of Administrative Law, and that will allow us to have the first filing round open up on January 2nd of 2019. Mr. O'Donnell? Yeah, I have a question with regard to criteria. I think I know the answer, and I'll bet it's more of a legislative matter than it is a state allocation board matter. But um, there's no priority for a Title I school to receive this funding over another school, is there? So the priorities for this program, there were two written in the statute, um, mm -hmm. and the program provides priority for districts that meet the criteria for financial hardship uh, as the criteria mm -hmm. as the school facility program defines mm -hmm. it. So those are the districts that may not have the funds available to make their local matching share requirement for the program. It does require a 50-50 match for new construction projects and a 40% match to retrofit projects. And then there's a second criteria, criteria for those school districts that have a uh, high percentage of students that qualify for free and reduced price meals. Two so years. the regulations um, outline a an all or nothing criteria for the financial hardship. If you qualify, you get 40 points. If you don't qualify, you get zero points. And then the free and reduced price meals are structured on a sliding scale so that the higher your percentage of free and reduced lunch, the higher your preference points will be for receiving funding for the applications. And under the hardship? Um, everyone can qualify for the free and reduced price meals. So it's two separate criteria. Um, if you, then that helps determine the funding order. So if you're a district that doesn't qualify for hardship, you would receive zero points in that category, but maybe you have 100% free and reduced lunch, you'd still get the points for free and reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. So you so can you get might, up to 40 points there. I'm sorry. So you might have uh, a better chance or you might score higher than a district that doesn't have that population. That's correct. Okay. And I just, where I'm coming from is more of a, again, probably a policy legislative manner is, um, I, I, I'd like these dollars, I'd like full day kinder to start off where we have the achievement gap. Um, and that, that's kind of where I, where I see the need for full day kinder mostly right now, um, not, not the daycare want, if you will. So thank you. Mm -hmm. any, other, any other questions? Yes, um, Mr. Torlakson. Just wanted to thank the staff for very good work, very good thinking on this, and just in general thank the legislature and the governor, the wisdom of putting this in the budget. Uh, this is really important as 
Patrick was just alluding to, we, we have uh, achievement gaps, and we also have the need to do more for early learning, and the students who get a full day kindergarten will be much better off than students that don't. And so uh, this investment makes a lot of sense, and it's going to be good for our students, not just in kindergarten, but all the way through their, their career in high school and beyond. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to move this item. Motion by Senator Pan. Second. Second by Mr. Diaz. Is there any public comment um, on the proposed regulations? <coughs> Seeing none, uh, we'll do a vote. Senator Pan. Aye. Assemblymember Nazarian. Aye. Assemblymember Chavez. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Tom Torlickson. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. We'll move on to the next item. Sorry, what we have is just a three-month workload. Does anyone have any comments or questions on the three-month workload? Is there any public comment um, on this or on any other matters um, under the purview of this board? Um, seeing none, we're going we're gonna to hold the roll open for Senator Wynn, who I understand is on her way. Um, but everyone else is free to go. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Touch with us, okay? And now we're adjourned.